If you've heard songs like Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, Blank Space by Taylor Swift, or Dark Horse by Katy Perry, then you have heard the work of Max Martin. Max Martin is a producer and songwriter behind 25 Billboard Hot 100 number one songs, many of which he has written or produced. But since Max Martin isn't on social media and doesn't do too many interviews, he's fairly mysterious and relatively unknown by your average music listener. So this had me wondering, who is Max Martin? Why is he so mysterious? And what are his secrets to making these hit songs? Well, today we are going to be looking into the mysterious man behind 25 number one songs. Carl Martin Sandberg was born in 1971. Surprisingly enough, neither of his parents were musicians. Instead, his dad was a policeman and his mom was a teacher. He quickly fell in love with music, listening to his parents' music collection that consisted of artists like Elton John, Queen, The Beatles, Mozart, and more. His older brother was also very into glam rock, which gave him the short-lived dream of becoming a rock star. He said that at the time, he listened to nothing but Kiss, and because of this music, he sang in multiple bands. In Sweden, they actually have a state-sponsored music education program, with about 30% of these students going to publicly funded music programs, so Max took advantage of this by taking free private French horn lessons. He continued to learn other instruments like the drums, the keyboard, and more. Eventually, he joined a band called It's Alive, with the stage name Martin White. But despite his love for metal, he also had a passion for pop music. He even said, I couldn't admit to my friends that I liked it. Eventually though, after being in his band for a while, he met the DJ Dennis Pop in 1994. Han sa behövde någon som kunde spela lite akord och sådär. Eh, vilket han har fått för sig att jag kunde. Eh, och så började vi då, vilket var en helt eh, sjuk grej faktiskt. Det förändrade ju allting för mig. Alltså inte bara att han ens såg mig och tog upp mig in i sin värld. Det, var ju helt, det förändrade hela mitt liv. Jag hade ju aldrig suttit här och pratat med dig idag. Uh, om, om inte vore för honom. Dennis was an already successful music producer who had just recently founded Sharon Studios, which was a recording studio that would become a go-to for many popular musicians. Max's band would be signed by Sharon's record label, but Dennis really took a liking to Max. The two began working closely together with Dennis acting as a mentor to Max. Dennis made sure to capitalize on Max's ability to write and produce songs, giving him a good understanding of the music studio rather than the stage. Dennis also suggested the stage name Max Martin instead of Martin. Martin White. Dennis Pop and Max Martin became an inseparable producer and songwriter duo. Well, uh, my name is Dennis Pop. This here is Max Martin. And uh, we're one of the producer crews who, uh, behind Ace of Base. The first group that the duo worked a lot with was the Backstreet Boys. Max wrote multiple songs for them, including the song I Want It That Way. The songs he wrote for them really helped put the band on the map. Max and Dennis were responsible for the whole birth of Backstreet Boys. Our sound, um, I think even kind of helping us find ourselves within our image, within whatever encompassed the Backstreet Boys was Max and Dennis. At the time, the Backstreet Boys were signed to Jive Records, the same record company that in 1997 had just recently signed a girl named Britney Spears. They were looking for a songwriter to help her out, so they immediately thought to recruit Max Martin. Max had already written a song that he was holding on to. He first tried giving it to TLC and the Backstreet Boys, but after they rejected it, he thought that Britney would be perfect. And that song was Baby One More Time. When the song was released in 1998, it became Max Martin Martin's first number one hit song, and to this day it is one of the best-selling singles of all time. Working with Dennis Pop, Max learned one of the first secrets to making a hit song. He learned that a song had to be recognizable in the first few seconds, meaning it had to be unique or catchy enough to the point that you would know the song right away. Now we had this uh, philosophy of, because he came from the DJ world to, you know, and to keep people on the floor when you changed the song, you had to, it couldn't be like, you know, What's this? It had to be something. He liked playing songs where they knew exactly what it was, just from the very start. This is evident in Baby One More Time and plenty of his other hit songs. Right before Max released this song with Britney Spears, his mentor and friend Dennis Pop passed away of stomach cancer at the age of 35. Because of this, Max took over the musical aspect of Sharon as Tom Taloma took over the business aspect. After only a couple years though, Sharon was closed because Max wanted to experiment with other types of music without being shackled to the Sharon name. Max continued working with Britney Spears for a while, writing many of the songs on her next two 
albums. In 2000, he landed his second number one song with NSYNC's song, It's Gonna Be Me. During this time, he opened his own production company called Maritone in 2001 with Tom Tawama. Max was in high demand because of his work with Britney Spears, and because of this, he started working with tons of different artists. He was so successful by 2001 that he had people like Simon Cowell saying, if you've got Max Martin as your writer, you have a better chance of having a worldwide hit than with anyone else. In 2004, Max began working with Dr. Luke, likely teaching him a thing or two as they would eventually become frequent collaborators, and they both helped create Kelly Clarkson's album Breakaway. One of the songs they worked on was Since You've Been Gone, which surprisingly didn't go number one. It was while working with her that he experimented with more rock sounds within his pop music. He also aided in the creation of some of the songs on Pink's album I'm Not Dead in 2006, but 2008 is when Max Martin would really hit his stride. Max began working with Katy Perry and helped her create the song I Kissed a Girl, which would become his third number one hit song. This song was also fairly controversial at the time, and it helped kick off his huge streak of success. I was watching the news, uh, like uh, clips from, from the States, where, you know, the news reporter was out in the streets like, oh, would you let your, you know, kids listen to this thing, you know, kissing girls, a girl kissing a and and, that, and I was like, oh my God, this is going to be huge. This is amazing. <laughs> They're asking the parents about these things. It's like, yeah. great. That same year, he scored his fourth number one hit with the song So What by Pink. He continued getting number ones with songs like My Life Would Suck Without You by Kelly Clarkson, Three by Britney Spears, California Girls and Teenage Dream by Katy Perry, Raise Your Glass by Pink, Hold It Against Me by Britney Spears, E.T. and Last Friday Night by Katy Perry, and many more. It seemed like Max had really found his formula for making a hit song, with his second secret being the significance of the melody over the lyrics. Since he isn't a native English speaker, growing up he always felt more of a connection to the melody rather than the lyrics since he can't always understand them. I think a lot of us growing up, yeah. not knowing the language, mm. we gravitated to towards those things that sounded cool. You know? yeah. I think too that the, the way we listen to a lot of suites, I think listen, um, or actually outside uh, uh, English speaking mm. countries, uh, listen to, they you listen to the sound and you make up what it's about I, I believe that the sound of a melody is crucial I think yeah. a, a great melody can be ruined by a bad sounding lyric Max and many others attribute this approach to his success as the melody and the way in which the artist sings it is much more important than the actual lyrical value for example with the song I kissed a girl Max said he didn't even understand why the song was so controversial for me coming from here that's like yeah mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter, I guess. But um, but it turned into this whole thing in churches, and you know, they, they went bananas. Yeah. It was it was brilliant, brilliant. So it seems like Max being from a foreign country and not being a native English speaker has helped him achieve a different perspective on music than many of us may have, and doing so allows him to create some hits. But even after all of the hit songs from 2008 to 2011, Max was not done. He continued putting out number ones consistently with songs like Part of Me by Katy Perry, One More Night by Maroon 5, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together by Taylor Swift, Roar and Dark Horse by Katy Perry, Shake It Off, Blank Space, and Bad Blood by Taylor Swift, Can't Feel My Face by The Weeknd, Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake, Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, Save Your Tears by The Weeknd, and My Universe by Coldplay. With all of these songs, that makes 25 number one hits from Max Martin from 1998 to 2021. This ranks Max Martin as the third songwriter with the most number one singles, right below Paul McCartney and John Lennon. He's also received 11 Songwriter of the Year awards as well. But there's something about all of the songs I just listed that helped them become big hits, and that is Max Martin's third secret to writing a hit, which is simplicity. We'll go and like try and hash out the lyrics, but his melodies are so incredible and so sophisticated, but simple. I think that Max's secret is probably something along the lines of the simplest, most effective thing is always the best. I think what he's great at is stop, take a deep breath, simplify. Max Martin often emphasizes how important it is to keep the song simple if you want to have a pop hit. He strives to make a song that everyone can enjoy, and he does just that. I think that's my job or our job when we work with these people is to kind of make them believe that that's enough. Mm. Don't worry about it. Everyone knows you're amazing. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the challenge, to really make them feel secure that it's okay to, to just sing and concentrate on, you know, hopefully getting great lyrics and tell the story. 
Mm. It's enough. A YouTube channel called Learn Audio Engineering ran some numbers on Max's hits and discovered that musically speaking, in terms of chords and keys, his songs were all fairly simple. Max Martin's number one history is impressive, and that's what most people focus on. But honestly, I think his overall chart history is also astounding. I recommend checking out this video, and I'll link this in the description as well, because pretty much every popular song I've ever heard is on this list. I was watching it, and I was blown away to see how many songs he had writing credits on. But one thing we have not answered yet is why Max Max Martin is so mysterious. I managed to hide between two speakers in a basement for over 20 years. And then you did this. Thanks a lot. He rarely does interviews, hardly goes to music industry events, and he doesn't even use social media. And that's because Max Martin is scared of fame. Recently, he worked on a musical called Anne Juliet, and as the interview began, he said, I'd rather not do this. And he further explained, I've always been scared of fame. I've seen it up close and I don't think it's healthy. And it makes a lot of sense for someone who's constantly around famous people and sees what they have to go through. Fellow Swedish artist E-Type says, with his own demos, Max Martin singing himself, those would have sold 10 million or more, but he wasn't an artist. He didn't want to be an artist. Max Martin is a songwriter and a producer who has mastered his craft and he loves doing it. He doesn't care about the fame and the fortune. He just cares about making a good product. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. This is Matty Balls. I hope you guys enjoyed. I thought this guy was super interesting and it's cool to see all the things he's done and the way the music industry works. Really interesting and fascinating to me. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you did down below. Other than that, this has been Matty Balls and I'll see you guys next time.